the mystery of basically how oil gets created is still, it amazes me how for something that's been around so long, it, there just aren't that many people that really understand. I think a lot of people also think that when you, when you drill into a pool of oil, it is a pool of oil. It's like drilling into someone's oil tank. And then you just basically you know, drain it out until it's dry. In reality, oil has to be, there has to be some sort of a carbon presence that got trapped in, in, in rocks and decayed. And then there had to be something that sealed the top and, and actually put a, put a basement under the bottom or the oil migrates. Most of our you know, fabulous wealth of dry holes, no one ever drilled a dry hole just for the hell of seeing if there might be oil. They had, they had sufficient evidence through all the sort of interpretation that those must be hydrocarbon bearing rocks. And in almost all the dry holes that I've ever heard about, they actually, they actually were right in their assumption. There were, there were clear evidence that hydrocarbons were once there. And the term they use, it migrated. <laughs> and for years I thought, what do you mean migrated? I mean, it just, they, they left and went over there? No, it just dissipated. And usually it's because there was either the, 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 the ceiling had too many fractures in it and it just basically, and so it's all out there someplace, but just in, just clinging to little rocks. Or the, the, the water floor, which almost, almost always it's water that traps the floor, is basically highly pressurized water. And it's the, the, that's keeping the oil trapped at the top. So when your seismic work is right, and you see, boy, that pool is where the oil is, and you drill well more into it, and then you finally let the, let the oil flow, it's, it's, unless it's, unless it's never had reservoir pressure, then you're in a whole different tough business. You drill your well, Eureka, you find oil. Biggest risk then, it blows out because you unlock the pressure that's been trapped in there. They think that maybe half of the spindle top field rolled down the gutters of Beaumont until they could finally cap it. So over the years, we developed unbelievable technology of blow up control systems that literally Make sure that you trap that pressure and then you bleed it out very, very carefully. Um, imagine a balloon you filled up and you basically, you know how you get that squeaking sound by just letting it come out very. But over time, every barrel you produce creates voidage in the reservoir. Uh, and so over the life of a field, you're dissipating the pressure. And at some point, you reach what's technically called the bubble point. That's when the trapped gas starts bubbling to the top. And, then, and also over time, your water table, because the water is compressed sometimes up to threefold. So it's really acting like a plunger coming up and it's pressing the oil out. But as soon as the water finds its way into the well bore, it crowds out the oil. And that's what in the industry is called rising water cut. And, and at some point, the water is basically 80% and the oil is 20%. So you kill the well and you try to position the well basically. so so. So the old, great old days, you go into 400 foot oil column, you'd produce as close to the bottom as possible, but never right at the bottom because you want to hide from the water. The reason these horizontal wells came in is they were dealing with all these thin oil columns where you're hiding from the gas at the top, which is a no-no, and the oil at the bottom, so you're threading the needle. And then you're putting all these nipples on called multiple oil well completions. And now they basically have, they call them intelligent wells. They have at every nipple an automatic shutoff valve, so as soon as they encounter water, they kill the well. And what you're really doing is getting the last attic oil out of the field. Once it's over, you then have vast amounts of the remaining original oil in place, but you have to get it out with a shovel, or an intense amount of steam, or going into rocks that never had any porosity and, and doing these expensive hydraulic fracking jobs where you're literally shooting effectively BB pellets um, or the most exotic are ceramic pellets which are which are which are last far longer before they ultimately crush to propping up the rock formations and creating artificial permeability but the pressure is so great the deeper you go that it only lasts a short period of time and they're and they're tight again that's called tight rocks versus the highly permeable rocks that create high oil flows so no matter what field region you're in you, you always seem to find the, the largest things first because they're the easiest to find. 
and you drain from the large things the highest quality oil because it's the easiest stuff to get out. And so what we're left over with in all of these fab fabulous tables of proven reserves are reserves that will basically be unaccessible to mankind <laughs> until we reinvent ourselves into microbes and crawl into the oil wells and eat it in place.